Hi guys, it's Dr. Childs here. Today I'm going to be talking about thyroid medication dosing and how to convert between various different types of thyroid medications. And we're going to be talking about this in detail and I'm going to be giving you at least three different charts. Um, and we're going to be talking about the importance of each of these charts uh, and how to talk to your doctor. First I want to start by saying that I'm not a huge fan of these conversion charts. I know there's a big demand from the patient side of things to look at these and to want to find this and I understand where that desire comes from. I think it stems from the fact that most doctors are not knowledgeable when it comes to um, converting between different thyroid medications. I mean I've seen doctors that they prescribe only levothyroxine and that's it. There's n no other options um, as far as they're concerned. And obviously there's way there's a ton of different types of thyroid medications that can be effective in cases where one isn't important. So I do think there's value um, in looking at these conversion and this chart um, and switching between. However, I don't want you to look at this as an exact science because it isn't. A lot of the times what we're doing is we're switching between medications that don't even contain the same ingredients or same active hormones. Um, and there, you can't really say that this hormone is equal to one and a half of this hormone. It doesn't really work that way. Having said that, we're still going to talk about it, but I just want to put those disclaimers out there so that you're aware of them before we jump in. So this is the first chart that we're going to be looking at. Um, and you, if you can't see it real well, um, go into the blog post because you can see the images there and you can download them or whatever you want so you can see them a little bit easier. But this chart is the one that most doctors are aware of. This is what I would consider to be the standard where I don't know where it was produced or how it was produced, but most doctors when they look at converting between medications, look at this chart. Actually now that I'm saying it, I believe this came from um, the pharmaceutical industry. So I think this is where it was produced and, and replicated and so on. So this is probably what you're used to seeing. Um, and what you'll see here is, is well, well, we'll just we'll just break it down a little bit, and then I'm going to talk about why I don't think it's that accurate. So, um, so even though yes, we're talking about it, I I, I want to just explain it because it's not really that helpful, and I'm going to explain why here. So I've highlighted this first one here, um, probably because there's a lot of consistencies among doses. But what you would do is you would just say, okay, if I'm on, let's just say, let's just pick this one right here. Let's say you're on 75 micrograms of Synthroid. According to this chart, 75 micrograms of Synthroid um, is the equivalent to three-fourths a grain of NDT of any type. Um, or there's some compounded uh, T4 and T3 medications here as well. But that's how you would use it. So anything that's on this line here is equivalent, according to this chart. Now again, I'm not saying that this is accurate, I think it's far from accurate, but that's how you would interpret and look at this chart. So let's look at what I have highlighted here, and that is what I would say probably is among the most common dosages. So this chart is saying that 100 micrograms of any type of T4, whether it's Synthroid, Levothyroxine, or Levoxyl, is equal to one grain of NDT, um, which would be, uh, that would be things like Armour Thyroid or NP Thyroid or so on, which is also equal to 25 micrograms of synthetic T3. Okay, so it's 100 micrograms of T4 is equal to 25 micrograms of T3, which is equal to one grain of NDT. All of these things they're saying are equivalent. Now, the big problem with this is that this chart is a very conservative chart. And what I mean by that is it favors T4 over T3. So in this chart, whenever you're using it, if you do it, you're almost always going to be underdosed. And most doctors like that, and I'll explain why. It has to do with the fact that if you take a T3 medication, you're my, more likely to experience side effects. And that those could be both good and bad. But the bad side effects are not really that big of a deal, so I don't want you to get too freaked out over that. But just understand that a doctor would rather underdose you than overdose you. Because the consequences of overdosing are usually worse than if you're underdosed. Because all you need to do is, is simply you know, slightly increase the dose next time they see you, and you're, you know, you're doing a lot better at that point. But... When it comes to the thyroid, they almost always prefer T4 and they almost always prefer underdosing. So here's what happens. A person, let's say you in this case, is on 100 micrograms of T4. You're not doing that well. So you're taking Synthroid or you're taking Levothyroxine. You know, you're still feeling symptomatic. You're still not feeling great. So your doctor says, okay, and you convince your doctor to switch you to, let's say, Armour Thyroid in this case. So the doctor says, okay, so they Google it or whatever they do, because most of them aren't going to know this off the top of their head. They're going to have to look it up. They look this up. This is the chart that's provided to them. And they see that, oh, okay, well, 100 micrograms of, of T4, which is what you're on, is equal to one grain of NDT. So they switch you to NDT, one grain. And next thing you know, you're feeling worse. Uh, you're having, you're, let's say you're having more fatigue, you're gaining more weight, you're losing more hair, etc. All of the symptoms of hypothyroidism that you had had before are now worse. And so you check your labs and you find that your TSH has elevated. So then your doctor says, hey, look, I switched you. This medicine doesn't work. It, I told you it wasn't going to work, yada, yada, yada. So let's move on. 
um, we got to go back to the T4. That's a solution. Well, the problem is, like I was saying, and what like we'll talk about, is that this conversion chart favors T4 and it underdoses you. So there's no way that you can fall, you know, get into that situation and say that you've given it an honest chance because you haven't. And as you'll see, there's actually a pretty big difference between my recommended chart and this existing chart. So I'm only bringing this up to tell you that it's not a great chart um, and that if you're being dosed by this, you're probably, I would say, 80% likely to be underdosed in the process. Some of you will be okay because, like I said, remember, this isn't an exact science, but many of you will not feel well if you follow this chart. I also outlined some of the other reasons. I'm not going to get into those, but I have a lot of information on why this is probably inaccurate and how the T3 doesn't quite convert and using some studies to tell you that T3 is, you know, a T4 equivalent of 3.3 about. So if you do the calculations, even this chart underdoses it based off of the most recent studies, which show how effective T3 is. But again, I don't want to get into the numbers because it's kind of hard to have that discussion without looking at it directly. So that's chart number one. So then we have this study um, and you can click to this study here. So I'll open this for you. And we'll go to it. Well, we'll let it load for a second. But this study was done May 2013. So what? This is six years ago or so, a little over. So this study showed that it what it did it, it it looked at some patients and it looked at those on T4 and those on T3. Um, and this wasn't even the main result of the study, by the way. But they found that there was a probably a more accurate way to convert between. Um, medications and dosages because it took people on different medic medicines and swapped them back and forth. And then they tried to say, okay, well, what are the equivalent dosages? So th up here they said this is the standard one, which remember is the one we just talked about, 100 micrograms of T4 is equal to 60. And they said, well, wait a minute. With all of the patients that we've been looking at, we are finding that 88 micrograms of T4 is closer to one grain than 100 is. So remember, in the beginning, I told you that that original chart favored T4 over T3, and this study is proving that. It's saying, hold on, 88 micrograms, which is a lower dose of T4, is cl more close to, or is, is a more equivalent to one grain than 100 is, which is the old stuff. So this study kind of looks at it, looks at that previous information and says, eh, I don't, I don't think this is ser quite that accurate. Here's the information, and here's what we think is the new information. Okay, so I just want to introduce you to the study. You can get the study in the link here if you want to look at it. And then what I've done here is I've gone through it um, and I have uh, extrapolated out to T3 dosages and so on. So if you wanted to, you can go and look at a similar chart and presentation and look at this um, chart to compare it to the first one. Um, but the reason I want to bring this up is twofold. Or is it, well, the main reason is this. If you are somebody who is working with a doctor who tends to be more... Um, let's say conventionally oriented. So there's somebody who's like a primary care physician or an endocrinologist. They're not really thinking outside of the box. Um, if that's the case, this information would be very helpful to you or likely would be helpful to you because it's a study, which is the language that doctors speak, which shows that the original conversion chart that they're probably trying to use is not quite that accurate. So I do think it's helpful to understand this, even though it's not my ideal situation. It's still much better than the first, um, but not quite as better as the third table I'm going to be talking about in just a minute. So at least be aware of that. Again, you can get the links um, in the article, and I've looked at. The, I'm not going to go through all of them here, um, but the essential, the 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 main difference is that 88 micrograms is equal to one grain instead of 100, which is what we said in the old one. Um, and then the third chart I want to talk about is what I would be what I would consider to be the most accurate, and that's my own conversion chart. So this is based off of. Well, I have a couple of reasons why I'm I'm not going to get into those, but. Um, right now in the calculations and so on, but based off my experience and based off how you can look at the T4 and T3 equivalent dosing based off of how T3 impacts the pituitary compared to T4, um, I think that this is the, the more accurate. Now the problem is there are no studies which show or prove or or validate or invalidate even that, that my chart is the best. I'm just telling you from experience that I, I believe that it probably is. So if you use this, this is probably the closest way to get to your to your optimal dose. And in, in my chart, Again, we'll just go over the, the main one here. I think 75 micrograms of T4 is, is close to one grain of NDT. So remember, originally we said 100 is equal to one grain. Then we said, wait, 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 there's probably something better. That's 88, which is greater, which is equal to one grain. And then I'm saying, no, I don't, I think that's closer, but it's not quite there. Now, now 75 is closer to one grain. So we went from 100 to 75, which is a 25% drop to get to the same dose of NDT. So that's why a lot of you who, who switch from T4 to NDT, get underdosed in the process, and then you you ask me or you post on my blog, you say, well, I don't understand. My It didn't work for me because my TSH went up. That's not what that means at all. It just means that you didn't get on the right dose. If you would have doubled your dose, your TSH, I guarantee your TSH would have dropped and you probably would have felt better in the process. 
That has nothing to do with the inconsistency of the medication. Uh, it doesn't speak about uh, the T4 or T3 combination. It doesn't give you any information about that at all. All it says is that your conversion in the beginning was wrong to begin with, and of course your TSH is going to go up if you were underdosed. You just made yourself more hypothyroid instead of less, and you didn't even find equivalent dosing in the process. So you do not get confused by this. I see a lot of questions on my blog about this, um, which is the reason I created this. Um, this blog post and the reason I'm creating this video because I think it's really important to understand and it's a very simple con uh, concept by the way um, so again look at look at all those studies if you want to go into more detail you can look at these charts if you're thinking about switching again I'd recommend that you use my own but again just realize that there haven't been any studies to validate or invalidate it this is just based off my experience the second level is the one that has some studies which show that it's that it you know that it may be um, um, better than the original chart that most doctors use so one more thing and then we'll be done here. What I want to talk about are factors which may affect your conversion. So these are factors which, if present, may alter, as I said before, um, remember it's not a perfect science, they may alter your the, how you convert from, in, let's say, T4 to NDT. Now some of these things, if present, may require that you go up. So that conversion, again, is not going to be accurate because you're going to need a higher dose than the one I even said. Even though that's closer to what I think is true, um, if you have these situations or these conditions, you might have to adjust it even further. So let's talk about a couple of these real quick. So number one is your weight. So in general, this is just a general rule of thumb. It's not, you know, it's not going to be accurate across the board for all of you listening. But in general, the more weight that you have on your body, the higher your thyroid dose will need to be. Okay. So a lot of times you'll probably see that thyroid medication um, is dosed based off of your weight. And the reason for that is simple. It's because the, the the changes in your weight also impact your metabolism, and we know your thyroid controls your metabolism. Therefore, these things are all connected. So it's a very simple concept. So in general, the higher the more you weigh, the more likely you are to need a higher dose of thyroid hormone. So if you are somebody who let's say 50, let's say 30 to 50 pounds overweight, which I would say is probably fairly accurate for most thyroid patients who are not being treated appropriately. I'd say that's probably around the range that I see, sometimes higher, sometimes less, but somewhere within that range. Um, if you try to use that standard conversion that I told you where 100 mics equals to one grain, which is what most doctors use, you are going to not only underdose yourself a little bit because that, that conversion chart is poor to begin with, you're now going to underdose you even more simply because you're now, you have a little bit of extra weight on your body. So remember, weight plays an important role. Number two, recent weight gain. Okay, so this, again, I know this is weight gain, but it's different. Because what if you are already taking thyroid medication and you've gained weight in the process? If that occurs, you're not you're going to now need even more thyroid medication. Okay, so remember, more weight, more thyroid medication. And if you gain weight while taking medication, you need to continue to adjust it because that's not normal. Right? You need to find the reason that you're gaining the weight to begin with and address that. And in many of you, that issue might be related to your thyroid. So just simply addressing your thyroid can probably stop that issue. Uh, the next one would be recent weight loss. So weight loss can affect you in two ways. If you do it correctly, so if you lose weight correctly, then you will notice that your thyroid dose will probably need to be decreased. And again, that just it correlates perfectly with what I said before. The more weight you gain, the more the higher your dose needs to be. If you lose weight the right way, then the smaller your dose will need to be. Okay, very simple. However, a lot of you listening to this, in fact, probably most of you, are whenever you've lost weight, it has not been done the healthy way. It's probably been done the unhealthy way. And if you do it the unhealthy way, which would be things like calorie restriction, or which is a new thing that I'm seeing a lot now is over fasting, fasting because they, they heard about it and then they over fast, which is the same thing as calorie restriction that cause a problem. Anyone with binge eating disorders or anything like that, anybody who's done uh, cleanses or fad diets or HCG diets or whatever, any of those types of diets, those are all the unhealthy ways to lose weight. And if you do that, you will have damaged your metabolism in the process. Um, it's called metabolic adaptation. It's very it's, it's non, non-controversial. We know that it occurs. And if you damage your metabolism, you'll affect your thyroid, which means you you might have had some weight loss, but you're going to need a higher dose of thyroid medication to compensate for that damaged metabolism. So recent weight loss, if it's done the right way, will cause a reduction in your dose. If it's done the wrong way, may require an increase in your dose. So I know that might sound a little bit confusing, but if you just think about it or reread what I've just have, have what I wrote on my blog, I think you'll start it'll start to sink in and you'll understand what I'm talking about. Another one would be inflammation. So inflammation from any cause in your body is going to impact how well you convert T4 to T3. That means you're generally going to do better on T3 than you are T4. And so a lot of these conversion, uh, the conversion charts that I just mentioned, they're not going to be 100% accurate because um, T4 is not as valuable to you as T3 is if you have inflammation. 
Okay, so you got to think about it in that way. The, the T3 carries more weight simply because your body can utilize it rapidly. It doesn't need to do anything. It's just boom, it can use it right away. Now, you can check for inflammation with simple blood markers such as ESR or CRP. So ESR stands for uh, erythrocyte sedimentation rate and CRP stands for C-reactive protein. And these are just blood tests that you can order. Um, they're, they're pretty simple, they're pretty standard. And if they're elevated, they're a marker, a potential marker of inflammation. Another one would be ferritin, by the way, if it's really high. But there are many of you who have inflammatory processes that are going on in the body. Uh, which may not be associated with an elevation of these markers. But a lot of you know how to feel it. You know, you might feel aches and pains and fatigue and, you know, just not quite feeling yourself. Your immune system is probably suppressed a little bit, so you're getting sick a lot. So those are all also signs of just inflammation going on, which may not be associated with specific markers. So if you know that you have inflammation, just, you know, either because you know what the symptoms are like or because you've seen your blood test and you just know that those things are elevated, then pay attention to that because that will influence how you convert as well. Um, the last two have to do with prescription medications and then supplements. So prescription medications definitely can negatively impact your thyroid. And I've created a list. Let me see here. Hopefully I link to it here. Um, hopefully, yeah. So yes, this is what I was referring to. So I have a whole list here. Let me scroll down here that lists all of the prescription medications and how they impact your thyroid. And there's a big list. There's also supplements here that impact it. Um, and I would recommend that if you're taking any prescription medication that you go to this list and make sure that you're not on it. Because if your medicine is on it, then it's going to potentially impact your thyroid. And usually, they don't impact it for the good. They impact it for the worse. So usually what that means is you'll need a higher dose um, when you do your conversion. Or again, you might need to switch more to more T3 compared to T4. Supplements, same thing is true with supplements. However, most supplements, if used correctly, tend to make... Um, tend to affect your, your dose in a positive way. So what they what they tend to do, and this is how I recommend using them, um, is they will enhance your body's ability to take T4 and turn it into T3. Or they'll address your adrenal function so that your cortisol is not impacting your thyroid negatively because you're now you're addressing the cortisol. Or they're improving your, your gut because um, we know that a bunch of your thyroid hormone is converted in your gut, about 20%. So if you affect these things in a positive way, they tend to affect um, your your dosing conversion in a positive way as well, and they tend to allow you to be on higher doses of T4. Now they might that may not be preferable, but I'm just saying that's a possibility. So I have a list of supplements here that you can see that are specifically directed towards the thyroid. Um, I would recommend that you take a look at those if you think that you haven't been on good supplements in the past, because supplements, in my opinion, should be a part of every plan. Um, how you use them specifically varies from person to person, but they almost I, there's never been a patient that I that I treat that I don't put on supplements because I almost always find somebody who needs something um, and they just benefit from them in the process. So remember, supplements can be mostly good. Some can be bad, very rarely. If you, if you get the good type of supplements and you target them towards your body and your issues, then they're going to be, they're going to be good. Um, but yeah, some of them can bind them up like, like iron um, and calcium can bind up your thyroid medication, for instance. Um, but if you just take it away from your thyroid medication, it's not an issue. So there you have it. Pretty long-winded discussion on <laughs> thyroid converting or converting um, various types of thyroid medication to other types, um, and why, why or how you would do that, and then three three different charts for you to look at um, to see how you want to do it. So again, if possible, I'd recommend you use the chart that I gave you last. So that was be, that would be my chart, the third chart. The other charts though can potentially have some value, but I think you're looking at a really small percentage of people who will actually use those charts and feel good. Probably in the you know 10 to maybe 20 percent range. Um, so there you have it. If you have any questions, leave them below. I'll do my best to answer them as usual, and otherwise I'll see you guys in the next one.